Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to continue on with the assembly of the lower end of the little Yamaha. We're going to start first with the left side of the case. That's what's pointing up right now. And what we're going to do here is install uh, four seals. The left crankcase, the crankshaft, clutch push rod, shifter shaft, and the transmission output shaft. One, two, three, four. Before I get to the seals though, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, shifter shaft. You see I have two of them here. This is the original one in my left hand. This is the new NOS piece that I bought uh, to replace the original. And the reason I did that, let's see if we can get this in focus for you. If you take a look at the end of those splines, that's where the shift lever itself that your foot pushes against slides on and is meshes with those splines right where my thumb is. And you can see that they're all distorted and uh, worn. Now, pr I probably could have gotten by with using this shaft. I chose not to. And uh, what I did is I ordered off of eBay an NOS replacement shaft. This is it right here. And clearly you can see those splines are perfect as you would expect from a new part. These pieces here, the spring, the return spring, this washer, and this C-clip, some people call that an E-clip, I transferred from the original shaft. And in fact, let me reach off camera here, here's the bag the original NOS part came in, and it's still the original packaging, this was if I can get that in focus for you. This part number is what's listed by Yamaha for this, this particular uh, machine. It's used on multiple machines, which is not unusual. Uh, different models use that same shift shaft. So I was able to get uh, this new piece, and I, I checked all the dimensions and everything, and it is the same shaft. So eventually this shaft will be used and it'll come through from the opposite side. Now we're going to move on to the seals, the four seals that will go on this side of the engine. We have the shift shaft, the clutch push rod, we have the uh, cr uh, crank, left crank shaft, and then we have the output shaft. Now these seals, these are the original ones with the blue tape on them, uh, my habit is when I remove the seals originally, which in this engine was done six more months ago, is I, as I remove each one, I label them. And that's the original label you can see there. I don't know if it comes through very well, but this is trans output shaft, which is right here. And I do that just to make it easier later on, like now, to match up the seals with the new ones. So in this case, I did order uh, new Yamaha brand seals. This is the Yamaha part number. If you look it up, there's many uh, resources for that. If you look up this part number, that uh, number does uh, indicate this seal. And what I did, I've already gone through this, but what I then do is I take and I match the seals up. And in particular, what I do is I look at the nomenclature that's, that's on the seal the size, that's the size right there. In this case, it's, uh, if I can get this in focus so that I can see it, it's 28.44.7, that's metric measurements. I make sure that the new seal also has those same dimensions on In this case, it's real small right there, but they do match. So that I know that um, the parts books were correct. They're not always correct, by the way. I have found over the years that uh, they do make mistakes in those part reference documents that you can find online, even the official uh, OEM manufacturer's documentation. So I always take a few minutes to cross-reference and make sure everything matches up. And in this case, all four of them do. I've done each, 
each of the four and the dimensions and the size everything matches as I would expect it to. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install the seals. I'll start here with the left crankshaft then I will just gradually work my way from left to right. First thing I'm going to do though before I install the uh, seals is I'm going to take a little bit of assembly lube and I'm going to use again my paintbrush and I'm going to fill each of the bearings, these two bearings, that one and this one, with assembly lube to lubricate them so that there's no dry start when uh, we go to start the engine later on. You could use really any oil for this. You could use a two-stroke oil, which some people use. That's perfectly fine. It's quite a bit lighter weight and thinner than what this is. The reason I use engine assembly lube is it's uh, much more viscous and won't uh, drain away uh, like a two-stroke oil would, which will just drain in the lower sump. I want the I want the, the uh, lubricant to stay in the bearings. So I'll do that before I put the seals in. I'll lubricate each one and then uh, push the, the seal into place. Typically, uh, I don't have a lot of trouble getting seals in. Um, I'll use a socket, depending on the size, I might use a socket, piece of wood, um, any, any means to press down evenly on the seal as you're attempting to put it in place. Piece of PVC pipe will work. I've used that before. You've seen me use PVC pipe for other uh, things such as the puller that I, or installer that I use to pull the crankcase or crankshaft into the crankcase on the left side. Nice piece of square cut PVC that's the right size will work. Um, sockets are probably the most commonly used. The problem you might get into on sockets, especially on these, um, the bigger seals such as this one, this actually goes here, um, is getting, if you don't have sockets quite big enough to push that in. Sometimes you can literally use your fingers and push them in. Put a little lubricant around that lip here, just a little bit of light oil like a 3-in-1 or machine oil. Um, you can heat the case if you want to get it to expand and literally you can push these in with your finger um, quite often actually and that will probably be my first uh, try as I'm going to use my fingers if I can and not use mechanical force on this. I will put a little lubricant around here, a little light oil. I will probably heat the case. Uh, I will heat the case to get it to expand a bit and I can probably just push these or at least the larger ones right into place. Sometimes the smaller ones are a little stiffer. So that's going to be the next step. I'll start with this seal, work my way that way. I'll bring you back in a minute uh, after we're all get everything prepped and ready to go. All right, I think we've got everything about ready to go. What I decided to do is uh, use a piece of PVC as a driver, or at least attempt to do that. This PVC is just a scrap piece I had in my PVC box that I keep. It's a little bit bigger than what I would prefer but the beauty is it will come flush with the case itself so that will drive the seal absolutely flush I think it'll work out okay try to start with my fingers first and then I'll square I'll seat it and square it up with the PVC with, with a block of wood and my mallet so I've got the seal ready to go. I have yet to oil it. I'll do that in just a second. I'm going to put a little bit of machine oil on the outside edge here and then on the shaft, crankshaft itself where the seal slips over it just to ease it going on. Probably not absolutely necessary but doesn't hurt either. My next step here is I'm going to use my assembly lube and my paintbrush and just get a little lubricant down into that bearing so that it's not completely dry when it starts up. If you've never used assembly lube before, I'm guessing most of you have, but if you haven't, you'll, you'll notice it's, it's quite viscous, quite thick, 
See how stringy it gets? I don't know if you can see that or not. It gets quite stringy. It's got a lot of body and it's intended to stay in place. So the idea being is that when the equipment, whatever you're using it for, in this case a crankshaft bearing, starts up, it's not completely dry and it helps preserve the integrity of the bearing. So you don't have to overdo it. You don't have to gob it in there. You notice I didn't use the pouring spout because I have less control of the pouring spout than I do using my favorite uh, paintbrush like you can see here. All right, we got that's that done. Now what we're going to do, wipe off a little bit of that assembly lube. As I mentioned before, make sure your hands are clean, your tools are clean, keep everything clean. I know I'm anal retentive about that, but it's not gonna change at this stage of my life. So the next step is just to put a little oil on the shaft and on the edge, the engagement side or lips of the seal. Don't need a lot of oil, just enough to put a nice little film. I'm going to put the lettering and nomenclature here facing up so it would be easily read. It went in, it got started quite easily. Well, let's see if we can't just seat that. There's no rush here. Just about done. I'm making sure the driver is centered over the boss of the engine, that is the casting. Make sure it's level all the way around with my finger. That is the seal itself is flush with the engine casting. It's just about there. There we go. So the left crank case seal is in and it's flush all the way around. Now we're going to move on and do the same thing on the other three seals. I'll do the, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the clutch push rod seal next. We're going to move on to the shift shaft and then the transmission output shaft, but the process, the procedure is identical to what you just saw. So we're going to do the clutch push rod seal here. I'm just going to go ahead and see if we can't get this started. If I can do it by hand I will. See if I get started straight.
This just happens to be a uh, half inch socket extension. It just happens to fit pretty well as a little driver. So I'm just checking right now to make sure. I know my hands are in the way a little bit here, but this it really can't be helped. I'm just making sure I'm going in nice and, and even. Checking with my fingers. See if I can move this camera over and give you a little bit of better angle. There we go. Checking, make sure it's going in straight. So that one's done. Now we're going to move on to the transmission shift shaft seal. Already got it oiled up. So we're going to go ahead and put that into place. That one just dropped right in with a little pressure from my fingers dropped right in. I did not have to, well dropped is a relative term, I had to push it, but it went right in with no problem. Well, that was easy. So the last of the four will be the seal for the transmission output shaft. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and install the transmission output shaft seal. It's already been lubricated lightly inside and out here the inside edges and the outside the bears against the case you can see the assembly lube I've already uh, used on the inside of the bearing itself as it turns out this driver is about the right size again to use with this seal so we're going to go ahead and see if we can't get this seated Shift to the block of wood. To finish it. Perfect. Well, that one's done. Rip off any excess oil. There is a collar, by the way, that will fit inside of this fitting here that uh, needs to be installed. So there you are, folks. Got it. Got her done. That is the four seals here, 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 and here. This is on the left side of the case. The next operation will be to flip the engine over 180 degrees so that the right side is facing up and we'll begin the assembly of that right side of the engine uh, which will then include uh, the shift shaft and uh, all the other components, quite a few of them actually, that will go on that side of the engine. So until next time, as usual, thanks for watching.